children of all ages it is me duke ct here live on talkshoe.com how y'all doing this thursday evening sorry i couldn't do it last week i uh had a little um you know uh, other podcast and my internet was getting a little bit wonky and it couldn't go it was a little bit up a little bit down a little bit this that and the other and the third but don't worry ladies and gentlemen i am here I am live, and I am going to continue to do the greatness that is the Duke CT Lounge. And yeah, let me just um, get rid of this thing here. Oh, because um, I was going to talk about last week. I was going to talk about uh, 205 Live. I was going to talk about Enzo and 205 Live. And if you want to hear my opinions on that, um, I talked about that, um, and, um, <clears throat> I talked about that on, on, a, um, Rowdy C Wrestling Podcast. It will be uploaded on Saturday, so give him a listen, give him a like, give him all the good things and all the other stuff here. So, that being said, um, uh, well, what we're going to be talking about right here, right now, is WWE, some NXT stuff, as, as it were, my friend. We're gonna put this on, uh, making sure, um, you know, talk a little bit here, making sure. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm putting this on the Twitter. Hopefully, people will follow. By the way, YouTube. I mean, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Twitter.com/slash DukeCT. If you be so pleased, that'd be nice to follow me on Twitter and feed and such. Uh, also, you can find the show on YouTube.com/slash. Duke CT, and also you can find me on iTunes as well, and uh, you can also find me, Duke CT, also on manexpression.com, and also on uh, vidme, right, uh, vidme slash Duke CT, and anywhere and everywhere, and also the friend, Freaking Awesome Network forums, I'm not a forum, but the Freaking Awesome Network website, I am on there as well, I am trying to get on everywhere and show and share this great gospel of me, Duke CT, here on the interwebs. So, <clears throat> yeah, have a good night. So, a uh, good evening and such. And there's some interesting stuff to talk about here. Interesting things here to talk about. And I'm not going to talk about NXT TakeOver the News yet. And so on and so forth. Because right now, I'm going to be talking about The Gifted. Yes. Um, <clears throat> that new Fox show. The mutant show, the true mutants, not those fake ass inhumans. And by the way, that inhuman show sucked. That's my short version, long version. I might actually do a video review of that and put down the back burner because I am ghoul boy. Ooh, I got a lot of things to say about that that two episode pilot. By gosh, that is this. You want you want to talk about handling an L? This is the biggest L that Marvel has had. In a long, long time. But here, right here in the Marvel Universe, uh, Gifted, it's not an L. This is actually a W. Because honestly, these two, these guys, uh, the, uh, the Gifted was actually a pretty good show. And let's see, um, uh, talk about this stuff as well. Um, let's see. Because uh, a lot of people seem to like it. 76% of Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, you know, uh, you know, seven percent, eight two percent. A lot of people have seen this. Uh, a lot of positive stuff here. Uh, you know, a lot of positive. And you know what? I agree. There's a lot of good. Um, you know, a lot of good stuff here about it. There are some things here. First, you had a lot of. It was a little. Some of the dialogue was a little stilted at first, but it, when I grew into like some of these characters, um. Also, I like the fact they showed their powers, um, their interesting mutant powers, seeing how this stuff is. And it's grounded. It's gritty. 
I think it was actually, um, uh, yeah, the, you know, it's grounded. It felt like you were connected to these people, other than say the humans, where they were just they were out, they're obtuse at best, and at worst, really malicious to the people who aren't humans and such, who are they're, they're, they're that second class system. I know I shouldn't. I know, I know, I know, but but you know, I, oh, well, you're comparing them. I'm like, yeah, but. It, that is going to happen in this whole short little review here, or how long it is. Because if you want to join me in my review and you know, talk about that, about the, um, you know, about how it is uh, and everything else, this uh, review and everything else. So, yeah. Um, it's, um, you know, um, and everything else. So, go, uh, go right ahead and things like that. Um, but, um, anyway, so, the, uh, X, because I like the leadership of the X, uh, the, uh, everyone else here is, um, it's, it's, um, you know, the characters, or they're, it's not the X, but they're not, there's no Professor X, there's no, they say the Brotherhood of Mutants, and, um, uh, and the, um, the X-Men don't exist anymore. It, it looks like they're going into that Logan timeline, which I like. It seems like they're starting from the basic there. It looks like they're trying to really grow this group here. This seems to be very interesting. The X-Men disappeared and all this other stuff. It looks very interesting um, in this timeline. So it looks like there's going to be uh, something, um, you know, uh, all these other things here. I, I think this is going to be a really good, um, you know, I think it's going to be something really positive as uh, the show goes on. Uh, another thing I liked about this show was the powers. I think the powers are interesting. You have, um, let's see, uh, you know, um, let me see, uh, you have, uh, let's see, you have, Eclipse, uh, Marco Diaz, uh, you had, uh, you know, Thunderbird, really good stuff, Thunderbird, uh, Polaris, really good looks into Polaris, Blink, uh, Jamie Chan is Blink, who, you know, the last time we saw her, she was in the Days of Future Past, I believe, this is like her beginning, showing how good her powers is, uh, yeah, her powers, uh, you know, E is a E and everything else, her, how her power is developing, how she can teleport and go to other places on the planet and, and such. Uh, also, um, uh, the Strucker family was really good, the likable. A lot of them, it's like that, you know, oh, mutants are this, that, and the other, but now you, you can, uh, you know, you see how the family is, um, jelly, like, oh, I'm, they're both mutants now. Like, the kids finally developed, you know, the young kid was being bullied and tortured and such for, I don't know, no reason at this point. And, and then, you know, and then it, she, he snaps and then just breaks down the entire school with his mind, I believe. it's I don't know what type of powers that um, he has. Um, I, I don't know what type of uh, powers he has. It just, um, you know, uh, it just seems like... Uh, it seems like, um, you know, it's like something that destroys metal or, you know, something like that. It looks, um, yeah, you know, it looks, uh, you know, uh, yeah, um, uh, I don't know what type of, uh, powers that he has. It just seems like. You know, he just looks like he tears these type of uh, uh, type of telekinesis, you know, that side of thing, just to rip things apart with his mind. And you know, her, you know, that's something looks to be um, very interesting. You know, something like that. So that's what his powers. I don't know what his powers are yet, but I, I would love to hear what your comments on what type of power of uh, of. Um, <clears throat> Of Andy Strucker, you know, the, and then you have um, Lauren Strucker, who is the, you know, using her powers to move away and everything else. Looks very interesting. Um, yeah. Ah, uh, you know, dang little, um, uh, ah, get away, um, uh, get away, get stupid, uh, 
uh, thing fly or something. Mosquito, yes, a mosquito. That, that's the thing. Yeah, I was swatting a mosquito. But yeah, um, and you have uh, Caitlin and the Reed Struck, um, uh, Reed Strucker. Reed Strucker is a district attorney. Um, you know, to uh, help, supposedly helping the mutants to moving them to these camps, um, and all this other stuff. And now he fa- finds out, oh crap! Now my kids, uh, anything else? Um, yeah, you know, now his kids are getting endangered, and now it's um, supposedly now he needs to be uh, now he's like, okay, I need to be about this. Here's and actually before the the pilot and everything. He was more about out for himself and slightly interested in such, and like less of his kids and his and the marriage. But they changed this up to basically want the character to be more likable, which is a good thing. You want your character; he might be in a wrong, but at the end of the day, he's becoming more likable. You have to have that. Lord knows we have seen far too many times that you have characters who have like you know are so unlikable, and then when bad happens, you want to feel sorry for them. you like, oh, I, I want to feel so sorry for this person. But you don't because, no, this person was an ass the entire time. And if he would have done that, they were like, you know what? This, this character has been an ass the entire series. This The, the beginning and everything else is, like, they, he had a noble sacrifice in the end. If that would have been, that would have been like, uh, regardless, like, uh, it would have been a groan, but here, you're like, hey, you know, you root for it. It's predictable, but you also root for him. And seeing that he made his next, he's trying to get his parents, uh, to, he's trying to get his kids and to safety and his family to safety. You're rooting for him. That's what it is. You know? That's what you need to do as a character, as Reed Struck, Strucker, um, and, and so on and so forth, which I think that's, is, um, that's you know that's what you know that's how it is. Um, also, like I said, um, uh, yeah, um, um, Blair. You have Thunderbird, who is um, the uh, underground and everything else. Uh, yep, Thunderbird. Uh, he's the leader of the entire uh, the uh, the group. And you have, um, seriously, he's like, and I, this, his mutant ability is basically being like Spider-Man or a mix of like, he has hyper, tell like, this is what his ability is, ladies and gentlemen, is superhuman senses, speed, strength, stamina, and sturdiness. And also he trained on, on arm, hand-to-hand combat. So basically he's, he's like, you know, Captain America. Not Spider-Man, no, no. I think he's weaker than Spider-Man, but he's basically Captain America slash maybe a, a, a slightly stronger version of the Punisher. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's what Thunderbird is. He's just that. He's the... Uh, he's uh, That's what it is. I know, I'm, I'm simplifying because, dear Lord, there's so many X-Men. Yeah, he is... Um... Yep. Yeah, um, he is, um, I think he's like one of the few, um, you know, uh, Native Americans, you know, that's actually pretty cool, you know, again, hopefully, um, yeah, and it's funny else, ladies and gentlemen, that he is, Thunderbird is famous for getting killed off solely after his induction, so, grand opening, grand closing, so it's like, yes, all he's gonna be, oh, he's doing all this other stuff, and and you know, prove how he's great he is, and then he dies. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully that they can um, do something more with this character here uh, on the show. And then you have uh, po- um, uh, let's see, uh, Plor- oh, let's see, Plores, uh, let's see, um, let's see what other stuff you have here. Um, Paul, uh, let's see. Yeah, you have, um, <coughs> yeah, 
<coughs> the leader of um, uh, you have the leader of the um, uh, underground. You have um, uh, it looks like he has laser, like he has finger beams, uh, stuff like that. Marco Diaz and such. Um, he um, he is Eclipse. Yes, Eclipse, who can absorb and manipulate photons. Yes, photons. Of course, and and it, supposedly his backstory. I'm on Wikipedia, by the way, so it, this could be all BS. But you know what? I don't have any. I don't have to show Bible for me here. So, you know, hey, this is a quick notice here. This is what the show is, ladies and gentlemen. You know, live everybody. Let's see, right? Okay, here we are. All right, let's see. He, and by the way, here it is. He is a rebellious mutant that who can absorb and manipulate photons. Eclipse was rejected by his super parents. Grew up smuggling drugs from Mexico to the United States. Oh joy! Yes, <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> um, exactly. And the mutant underground uses him to smuggle mutants safely to Mexico. <laughs> uh, and now the wall has gotten ten feet higher. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say it, but screw it. Oh, uh, yeah. So, Eclipse. But yet, there's also something about Eclipse, though. He's, he he has a uh, a little girlfriend uh, here. Someone who relates to it. Like, you have um, <clears throat> Polaris. Is um, a, you know, she is um, a power controlling magnetism. And supposedly she's the daughter of another daughter of Magneto. Of Magneto. Oh gosh. Yep. Um. Yep. She is uh, supposedly, you know, in the series. Supposedly there are some words that Polaris is the daughter of Magneto. Great. So, so basically. Um, Magneto loses uh, Quicksilver and and um and the Scarlet Witch, but gains Polaris. Yeah, you know, what a trade! What a trade! <laughs> that that's a trade. Then again, Quicksilver, you know, died. So, you know, he you know so he just traded one daughter for another. Eh. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, um. It looks interesting. Uh, she did pretty good. But yeah, she gets captured by being, you know, after uh, someone shoots her boyfriend or something like that. Uh, and then, bam, just knocks him down and everything else. Um, and then she gets captured. And then she meets up with Reed Strucker. And then he tells her all this other stuff, including, oh, by the way, I think she tells her that she's, like, pregnant and everything. Yeah, so, yeah, um, we got baby mama drama. <laughs> Yes, um, so Eclipse is the baby daddy to Polaris' baby, and that you know, when all the stuff goes down to the school, which is, of course, happens at the school because of uh, all the other stuff is Andy Strucker and Lauren Strucker and all this type of stuff happened, um, you have Reed trying to make a deal with um, Eclipse, trying to get them to Mexico, and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, but before that, you have... Um, you have, uh, <clears throat> let's see. I think there was another dude trying to catch this uh, person. Um, you know, um, the uh, the Anti Mutant Sentinel Services Agency. Those dudes who just say, ah, screw it, we're going to go and, and just take everything else. They're here to basically be the uh, villains and such. And I often wonder, it's just going to be the entire series of them on the run. It would get really tiresome if that would be the case because I hope there's some more twists and turns. I hope they actually counter say villains or not just evil mutant, but the human mutant thing, I mean, that's nice. The mutants are now the underdogs again, but I'm hopeful there's, cause I wish there was some more stuff into it. You know what I'm saying? But then again, overall, um, yeah, as a pilot, I really enjoyed it. The characters were likable. The action was really good and Possibly really good stuff, and I actually, um, you know, seeing all the powers and everyone else doing everything, uh, including Andy Strucker doing the nice little ripping apart of the machines, uh, taking it, you know, saving his family and, and such, and yet his dad sacrificed him to save, uh, you know, sacrificed 
that left him through uh, the Sentinel services. And now, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, and now, um, I'm talking, uh, and now we set up a series of them going to try to save their families and all this stuff. Polaris wants to save his, um, um, not Polaris, um, yeah, um, you're going to have, um, Eclipse trying to save Polaris and, uh, the rest of the Strucker family trying to save Reed and so on and so forth from the wacky adventures that will encounter that. So what's going to happen? I can't wait to see more. So overall Fox, I think did a pretty good job here. And, um, here's hoping that they're, um, like I said, here's hoping that they're going to do more things here. I'm hopeful that they will continue to grow and continue to see things in a very positive and uh, positive out. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. I, I enjoyed the show, and I can't wait to see more of it. That's the uh, whole review, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to take a small little break, and after that, we're going to talk about NXT bringing back war games. Yeah, we're going to talk a little about that. My thoughts on it and more here live on the Duke Seeker Lounge. And let's see what music I'm going to play. You know what? I haven't played this in a while. How about a little bit of uh, Le Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Solace by 2P, the, uh, the artist 2P and the Joker here live on the Duke Seeker Lounge. Be right back right after this here on TalkShoe.com. Thank you so much for joining me, Duke CT. Be right back right after this. <laughs> Outside on the corner where I caught the bus Thinking in my head it's colder than I thought it was Sometimes life is like that And you just quiver your lips Whisper a wish Hoping someone might give us deliverance Now deliver this message Think I could live with this mess If you could just give a few seconds To come and sit in my presence And yes, it is so precious Yes, it is a blessing Next, I'll attempt to express it With every heavy breath Cause just to make it worth it And just to make it real You always made it perfect And that's the way I feel Sometimes we think too much And we lose control But it's not what you know no, it's who you know Days that will not end I'm sure you've had them too Wishing you're still in bed And yet we have to move This is what passion do This is what passion does It's on my planets too So I send back the love And we are back, ladies and gentlemen Thank you so much to being here live on the Dixie Lounge Thank you so much for coming in, chilling out and listen to the OC Remix, the nice docs of tones of the OC Remix. <clears throat> so, let's talk about NXT. NXT, a show that I've been, well, honestly, just found out a favor because it seems like it's running with the same program format. Do it uh, indie matches that wrestlers who just do a lot of the um, indie wrestling format that honestly at this point they, they throw away any settlements of character and interesting uh, interesting characters or anything else like that when NXT was trying to grow you know guys like Sami Zayn or Owen, all the stuff that actually there was actually story and interest characters now it's just it's nothing just like it's a great match that's it I'm sorry you know? Mm hmm. Uh, <clears throat> and all that good stuff. But, you know, but maybe this will bring some people. Maybe they've seen this and they said, you know, we need to bring these fans back. Let's do something crazy. So, now, ladies and gentlemen, they are going to do. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This November 18th, next month. At the Toria Center, Houston, Texas, WWE is doing a tech NXT takeover, but it's not going to be takeover Houston. Oh no, 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 no. We are going to have War Games. That's right, NXT takeover War Games. 
So here we are, right here, for the NXT. This is going to be fun. We have, like, um, matches here for the vacant women's championship with people who are just shouldn't be in the MMB should be champion. Who cares? No one cares about the NXT women's division. It's dead. But now we, you know, it is. But the War Games match, this looks to be interesting. This is something that I have never. Are they doing a two-ring setup? Because if it is, I'm, I'm going to probably watch this, and I'm going to be all in on that. Because uh, you have Sanity. Alexander Wolf, Eric Young, and Killen Dane versus the Undisputed Era. Called with Adam Cole, baby. Bobby Fish and Kyle O O O O'Reilly's Auto Parts. And hopefully I don't get called by DMCA. And take on the Authors of Pain, Occam, Razor, and also a they they also had the Authors of Pain also bring their big Bland wooden, wooden ply board known as Roderick Strong with Paul Eldrick. This will be the funnest war. I can't wait to see this War Games matchup. This looks like it's going to be fun, exciting, and quite honestly, it looks like to be something I can't wait to see. It looks like it's going to be something really good, uh, really fun, something exciting. And I, I, I'm just, just hoping that this is. The, the War Games match, which what we all know and remember, War Games, ladies and gentlemen, this was the format. It's had two teams of four or five men entry and, and everything else. Here we are. And funny enough, if you want to know the history of War Games, it was created by the late great Dusty Rhodes' daddy after viewing Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. It was a, it was it was going to be a original, especially match for the Four Horsemen. The, fourth, the first war games took place at the Omni in Atlanta during the NWA's Great American Bash 87 tour, where it was known as War Games, the match beyond. Eh, it actually did got beyond Thunderdome. <laughs> Booyah! Hell of a joke. Big joke right there. Booyah! Anyway, it would be held at three house shows later that year. Once at the Miami Orange Bowl, once in Chicago, and at the UFC Pavilion. And, other, and, the, and, and the other at the NWA's debut at the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island. Next, in the years later, it was held at Great American Gas Tour in 1988. It was actually released, you know, one of them in 98 was one of the release was on the W Horseman DVD. And the, one of the final ones were at the Great American, under the NWA banner was Great American Gas 1989. A house, and in a house show match, rematch in the Omni in, in Atlanta. And WCW originally used this at Wrestle War at five house shows during the Great American Bash Tour and in 1992's Wrestle War. Before it became the traditional Fall Brawl or event, 93-98. Ooh, those are really good. And they are the best matches and such. If you haven't seen them, if you have the WWE Network, go see the War Games matches. They are mm, good. Really, really good. Um, honestly, there's some really good War Games matches. Um, you know, you can, um, go check out. You know, go and check out, uh, you know, there's all these really good stuff. Um, seriously, there, I mean, I'm surprised they haven't done it. Ru I mean, Russell War 92, you had, that was a really good, we got Rick Rude, Steve Austin, R. Anson, Bobby Eaton, Lance Sabisco taking on Sting, Barry Rim, Dusty Rhodes, Ricky Stambo, they call off. That's a real good one. Go check that one. Um, 91, 92 are really good as well. Um, there's so many really good ones in this era of, you know, they have one ring or two rings wrapped in the cage. You know, you had the Four Horsemen versus the NWO. Really good stuff here. Um... Seriously, that was a very good one. Let's see. The team NWL, you have Nas, Styx, Conan, Marcus Bagwell, versus, uh, the, uh, the Ric Flair, Chris Morales, Steve Mike going Kurt Hanging. Really good stuff. It's actually some good, that's actually a pretty good one. A nice story time. You had, uh, that was not, that was um, the first, uh, that was the 97, 96 actually was the big one. Was Hulk Hogan, Team MWO, was Hulk Hogan, Na Kevin Nasca Hall, and the NWO Sting. Team WCW, Ric Flair, Lex Luger, Arn Anderson, Sting, 
and all these other things. And people, and this was the, the match that Sting turned his back on his friend when he was begging. He was begging him to come back, but no. And then the yeah, funny thing is, he actually came in, beat the hell out of everybody, and asked Lex Luger that was good enough for him, and they just rolled out. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, y'all can handle us your own." And then the NWO, exactly. And then he's and after that, that Monday night, the night Nitro, he came in, didn't look at the hard camera, and said, "If you stick with the fans, if you stick by me, exactly. You know, he talked. You stick with me, I'll stick by you." That was the fans right there, brother. That was actually what if it actually says he was a moderator, babysitter. I give Lex Luger the, the benefit of the doubt a, a, a thousand times, and you couldn't trust me. You couldn't trust me. I trusted you. You betrayed me all this time, and yet you couldn't do the same thing for me. After everything I put you through, phew, is that good enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> that was it. That was, and that was the end. <laughs> yeah, there was, um, there was another stuff here, but also, um, uh, you see, Sting Strong, uh, Sting Strongdren versus, uh, the Four Horsemen. Uh, yeah, there's some really good stuff here. So, yeah. There's been other stuff here for War Games matches and such. Um, <coughs> you also have, heck, Ring of Honor did one. You have Ring of Honor. You have Ring of Honor versus Combat Zone Wrestling. You have Ting Ring of Honor, Samoa Joe, BJ Whitner, Adam Pierce, Ace, Ace Steel, and, uh, and Chris taking on Chris Hero, Necro Butcher, Carlico Glassoni, you know, um, Nate Reb, and a mystery part. Exactly. You didn't know who these guys were. <laughs> yep. And it was, you know, it was actually, it was looked like much of a War Games match. If you haven't watched, that's actually pretty good. So go ahead. There's a ton of stuff in not only WCW history, but also Ring of Honors and everything else there. Cage of Death. All these things. This is so, this was a match revolutionary concept. And it's just sad. It took WE this long to do something like this. Hell, honestly, there should have been War Games matches. I honestly think um when um the Shield and Daniel Bryan were standing up against the Authority, you had you could have just had you know instead of them versus okay, you could have Evolution and Kane, Corporate Kane take on Daniel Bryan and uh, the Shield in a kick-ass war games match think about it holy crap that would be amazing that would have been amazing to do instead it just did you know the shield and evolution stole the show and uh, that Kane and day o'brien match was terrible i don't care if people say oh well you know no no, no. it was terrible it was just terrible. It was a terrible match. I just, I hated that match. I'm sorry. I'm tired of lowering the bar. Let's go hide the bar, right? Raise that damn bar, people. Kane shouldn't be, you know, heck, he lost a, a Demon Kane lost, like, a WrestleMania in a squash match. He shouldn't be fighting for the championship. No, 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 man. I didn't like that then. Didn't like that now. So that's, that's me. That's all me, baby. That's what it is. But that's just me. So, Overall, um, I'm happy with War Games is coming back. I might be a frequent watcher of NXT if this is going to be good. Because if it's a bad War Games match, I will continue basically making NXT relevant while continue watching Lucha Underground. Uh, and trust me, I've been watching Lucha Underground and I've been a lot more happier ever since. So, with that being said, that's it for the show, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you enjoyed the, the Duke CT Lounge. And um, remember, comment below. See how you, uh, you know, positive, negatives, and everything in between. Anyway, this is it for me, Duke CT. Remember, you can find me on YouTube.com slash Duke CT. Also, VidMe.com slash Duke CT. Also, my Minds account as well, slash Duke CT. And on uh, Facebook.com, Duke CT Productions. And you can also find me on 
um, <clears throat> the freaking awesome look and on manicexpression.com. Thank you so much for listening and watching as well. If you're looking at the video version, this is Duke CT here. Peace, love. I will see y'all when I see y'all later.